Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Elgato CamLink 4K. This is an upgrade to a video capture device I bought last year, and the big difference this year is that it does support 4K at up to 30 frames per second. Uh, last year's version topped out at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And what's cool about it is that it lets you take just about any HDMI device and essentially turn it into a webcam by connecting it up to one of your computer's USB 3 ports. And we found last year it worked pretty well, provided the computer was powerful enough. And now we'll see what happens when you throw 4K uh, at your computer, because this is uncompressed. It relies on your computer to do all the video transcoding, and that is certainly going to be an issue at some of the higher resolutions. So we're going to take a look at what you can and can't do with this thing in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Elgato provided this to the channel free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to it now and see what you can do with this thing. All right, so I have the cam link now connected up to this Dell XPS 15 laptop. I plugged it into the USB 3 port on it. You want to make sure that you use the USB 3 port and not a USB 2 port. A lot of computers have both. So if you plug it into the 2.0 port, it's not going to work all that well. If it doesn't fit like I have it connected here, they do give you an extension cable in the box. Unfortunately, though, if you are using USB Type-C, you'll need to get your own adapter. There was no Type-C adapter in the box. And like the prior edition of the product, they recommend a pretty beefy system to make it work properly. At a minimum, you need a quad-core i5, a fourth-generation processor or later. So when you're checking out your system specs, it needs to be i5 dash, then a 4 or better. Uh, I have it connected right now up to a sixth generation i7 6700HQ processor quad core. And as you'll see here, even that is not enough for 4K. So right now, I've got a uh, 4K source here, my video camera that's plugged in via HDMI. And I'm going to do a quick zoom on the screen here to show you what we're actually capturing at, even though uh, we've got this beefy system. So our source is, again, 4K, 30 frames per second out of that camera. But we're only capturing here with the Elgato 4K capture software at 1080p at a pretty low bit rate, even though I set it higher. Uh, what I found with it is that uh, it defaults to the GPU. Now, this particular computer has a GTX 960M GPU inside. That apparently wasn't enough uh, to get this to process at 4K. Remember, this is uncompressed video, so your computer hardware has to do the work. Uh, so if I switch over to the built-in Intel GPU, we do a little bit better. So I'm just going to hit restart here on the flashback recording. I'll talk about that in a second. And now that that's done, let's go back and see how we're capturing here. And now we're back to 4K, but only at 14 frames per second. And I'm guessing we can maybe adjust the bit rate to squeeze a little bit more frame rate out. But as you can see here, uh, this computer, which is no slouch, but it is from a couple of years ago, isn't enough for 30p. And if you're curious as to what this is doing to the computer, check out the uh, system stats here on the task manager. Uh, we're consuming about 3.2 gigabytes of RAM to get this video uh, transcoded. So you can imagine uh, really how much RAM you need in your computer too to make this work. The CPU isn't being heavily utilized, but the GPU on that Intel processor is. And it looks like some of that overhead is just rendering the video on screen here. So maybe if we minimize the window, uh, that might give us a little bit better performance. The problem is with it minimized, I can't see exactly what we're capturing at. But uh, you can see it is devoting a little bit more of the GPU to that. But when you switch out of the Elgato software and go to something a little more optimized like OBS, the story changes significantly. Uh, so what I've got right now is a blank canvas. We're shooting at 4K. 30 frames per second, basically matching the output of my camera here. So you can see 3840 by 2160. Uh, we're using the same frame rate as what's coming out of the camera. Uh, we're going to capture here at uh, basically a 10,000 bit rate along with a 160 bit per second audio rate. And we're going to uh, just kind of leave everything else at the defaults that uh, were set when I loaded up OBS. Now, of course, we've got a blank slate here. We've got to add our camera. So I'm going to go to Video Capture Device, and I'll go to OK here. And you can see CamLink just pops right up because as far as 
uh, any of these uh, software packages are concerned, this is just another camera that's connected. Uh, so very, very simple to get up and running here. We'll click OK, and here we are. Everything is working. I'm going to start recording now again uh, at 4K 30 frames per second. Uh, and all seems to be going well here. I'm not getting any warnings that are popping up. I did a few test recordings earlier. Those came over fine. Uh, they did say if you have any lip sync issues, you might want to bring in the audio from the cam link as a separate audio device. So that might be one thing to uh, consider when you're playing around and tweaking things. But 4K capture with the same Dell hardware seems to be doing much better now. And you can see too that uh, the system uh, is not being as taxed as heavily when it comes to the RAM. The GPU is still getting uh, hit pretty hard there, but look, it's now using the NVIDIA GPU uh, correctly here uh, versus what we were seeing on the Elgato capture software. So this has been something I've encountered a lot with their software. It's never as optimized perhaps as some of this other stuff is. Uh, so if you are using OBS for streaming or capturing, I think you might have a little bit more luck perhaps with a somewhat older or lower end computer uh, than you would with the Elgato software here. So this was good to see. Uh, what I'll also do is take a sample of what I'm recording right now, hello, and put it up on the extras channel so that you can see exactly what it looks like in the full 4K resolution at this bit rate. So again, you'll have to adjust everything based on your own hardware, uh, but I do think going outside of Elgato software here is the way to go. Now the cam link looks exactly like the old version of the product because they are replacing the old one with this one. So for the same price, 130 bucks, uh, you're now going to get the 4K capability built in. And again, you'll want to use somebody else's software to get that 4K capability, but it should work. It also works like a webcam, as I mentioned. So let's take a look at Skype. So here we are in Skype, and I've got my internal webcam right now looking at me, the one that's under the display on this thing. It looks kind of weird. Uh, but what I can do is switch over to the cam link, and you can see here that uh, Skype sees my video camera just like it would a webcam. And that's one of the advantages of this product, that it works really just as seamlessly as that. Just about anything that supports webcams will support this. And it also works with the Mac, again, just like a webcam. So if you've got all your dongles attached to your Mac, including your capture device here, and we load up something like the QuickTime player, uh, we can go ahead and actually record off of the camera here. So we'll go to New Movie Recording. Initially, it's going to pull up my webcam, as you can see, the little green lights go in there. Uh, but what I can do is just go over to this little icon there and click on the cam link 4K, as you can see. And when I do that, everything will rejigger itself. And here we go. We've got my 4K camera now uh, shooting footage into my Mac. And that is it. Now, there is uh, sometimes a little glitch you might see on the Mac side. This was something that the old product had as well. But if you go into the Elgato uh, capture software on the Mac, it will switch the device over to a mode that works better with the Mac. Now to switch it back, you've got to load up the software on Windows to uh, get it back to whatever Windows wants. Unfortunately, there's no other way to do it other than getting the software installed, plugging the device in, and having it recognize the device. I would have liked a little software uh, switch somewhere I could throw to go back and forth between those modes. But I am finding now it's working a little better here uh, on the Mac than it did before. Um, so that is good without having to do that. In fact, I didn't do anything to get it working on my Mac here other than uh, just plugging it in. So it should work just fine on the Mac as it's doing on Windows. And again, I would say uh, use your favorite third-party software for capture as opposed to Elgato software. Again, I think there are some optimization issues on the Elgato side, but there's a lot of third-party stuff that should work just fine. Now, one last consideration is the camera that you use with this. If it is your intent to use this as a means of getting your digital SLR footage, for example, into your stream, uh, you'll want to make sure that your camera can output what they call a clean HDMI signal. And what that means is exactly what you're going to see right here. So my uh, video camera here, this is a Sony camera, has all of my information here displayed on the camera's internal LCD. But as you can see here, the output has none of that stuff on it. It's just giving me the video signal uh, and nothing else. But some cameras don't do that. They don't have a clean HDMI out. They only mirror what's on the internal LCD. Uh, so Elgato has a compatibility page so you can see which cameras will work 
versus which ones that won't. If you don't see your camera listed there one way or the other, you might want to call the manufacturer or look through your product manual. Sometimes you got to dig through some menus to get clean HDMI output. SLRs can be a little more finicky than uh, video cameras can be, and some of the lower cost SLRs just don't do it at all. So if you are intending to do that, do check the compatibility list first before you get started. So altogether, this remains a very versatile product. You can take any HDMI source and turn it into a webcam that should work with just about any piece of software on your PC or Mac. It is a very useful tool to have in your toolkit because you never know when you might need some random HDMI source uh, brought into your devices. Uh, it works fine provided you use somebody else's software too, which is why it's good it's so versatile uh, because the Elgato software, as you saw, just isn't very well optimized even though it has some pretty cool features. Uh, the feature I really liked with it is that you can actually uh, use it as a time-shifting DVR for your game capture. So if you've got some really cool thing that happened and you didn't have the record button set, it will record it and you can actually grab it and pull it out even though you weren't recording at the time. It just kind of records in the background, which is really cool. Uh, but again, it does have a pretty stiff hardware penalty to get it all working. Uh, 1080p 60 was better on my Dell laptop. Uh, but again, if you really want to go for the most optimized experience, I think uh, OBS is probably uh, the best way to go, just given the high overhead the Elgato software was bringing to the mix here. But other than that, it seems to be uh, working just as well as the other one did. And remember now, this is the only version of the product, so even if you don't intend to do 4K, uh, this is the one they're selling now, so you do have that as an option for when you upgrade your equipment down the road. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.